is one simple choice. Now, here's your host, Jane Velez Mitchell. Ah, oh, happy, joyous, and free. Happy, <laughs> joyous, and free is how I feel because despite all the knucklehead things I do throughout the day, which are many, when I put my head on that pillow at night, I know I got through today without killing. And that is a joyous gift. And today we are sharing that gift, that gift of a peaceful, compassionate lifestyle, which begins on your plate. And you make a decision three times a day, at least, whether you're going to participate in promoting love, compassion, kindness, nonviolence, or not. And so we are just inviting you to check out, um, I won't say a brand new way of living, because actually it's the original way of living before industrialized farming, before we began treating animals, for example, as machines, before the rainforest was set on fire to create grazing land for cattle, literally destroying the lungs of the earth. This is the original way of living. And so I'm going to introduce an amazing woman, Michelle Fasnat, who has so many accomplishments, we could just list them all day. So Michelle, tell us what you're doing in terms of your new plant-based restaurant in Florida, where is it? In terms of your amazing school, which is going to be serving an entirely plant-based meal for the kids daily in Florida and all the other things you're doing. Just tell us. Oh my goodness, well you just brought up so many things, I don't know where to start. <laughs> start with the school. Okay, so starting with the school. So um, in 2004, I started a school, um, really just because it was something that um, I had moved to Florida and it was something I really wanted for my own children that didn't exist here. So I just was part of the plan to start this new, new school here for my own kids. And then it grew into a school for many other kids, and it's just grown bigger and bigger each year. So we started with 12 kids, and we now have approximately 240 children. We just bought our own new campus last school year, so that was a big accomplishment for us. Um, several years ago, when I became vegan and plant-based, I really started looking at the food the kids were eating. And um, it was really pretty bad. <laughs> it was just so sad to watch what they were eating and what they were doing every day at lunch. And I just wanted to see if there was something I could do about it. And um, I was originally working with the county to see if we could get vegetarian meals for our school. And that was a year long process. And I finally got that approved. And I, I felt so accomplished at that point, like, yes, we got these different meals for our kids. And those meals came in and they were just so sad all full of dairy and it was just just as bad as the previous way as far as my feelings with what the kids were eating <laughs> so i really wanted to find a way that our kids could eat healthier so last school year we started an initiative called eat more plants and save the planet and that was like based on our commitment to sustainability improved health and wellness and cooking with compassion so we did that and that was pretty cool. That was something we had the food from the county coming in and being delivered, but on our own, we were offering these plant-based alternatives to our kids. So when we were doing school special events, we were making them available to our kids. Um, each day we were offering fresh pressed juice and um, green smoothies. And so we were raising awareness. Then what we started doing in the evening at our school is offering health education classes to our parents. And so we were doing this once a month and every month we would feature a different plant-based doctor who would come and speak. I'm also the co-chair of the plant-based nutrition movement of Tampa Bay. And so our wonderful board was willing to come in on a regular basis and speak to our parents. So every month we featured a different plant-based doctor and we have a health coach and we've had food demos and the parents were wonderful. They were coming to these classes. We'd have an average of 80-ish parents per class. And they were learning so much that they really started understanding why a plant-based diet would be better for their children's health. 
So now we've got the parents on board, we've got the kids liking the food. And so for this school year in 2019, we hired a full-time plant-based chef and began offering full plant-based menu to our kids. So we really want our students to eat fresh, healthy, great tasting food every day, and they're doing it and they like it and the parents like it. So that to me is super exciting. That's just, you know, it's not really happening anywhere. And our kids who were really hesitant about all of this in the past, now like the food. <laughs> <laughs> they used to say to me, they would go, I would, I would buy them some food and try and give them something. And they would go, oh, that's vegan food. I'm not going to like that. Or, oh, that doesn't have meat on it. I don't like that. And now they're eating the food and they love the food. And when you put a salad bar out, they're like so excited. You know, they love a salad bar. Who would think, right? You wouldn't think that the kids would be so excited to eat a fresh salad and fresh fruit, but they are. And they love the veggie burgers. They love the veggie hot dogs. They love the bean and rice burritos, you know? I mean, we're only two weeks into this and it's been so successful. So do you see our culture shifting? Because every day it seems that another major institution in our culture, and I'm not calling this fast food, but I'm, I am talking important mm -hmm. cultural institutions. And when I say culture, I don't mean art. I mean, what's happening in society. Burger King with mm -hmm. the Impossible Whopper, Subway, which happens to be the largest fast food franchise. I didn't realize that until I did a little research, uh, offering the vegan meatball sandwich and now Kentucky Fried Chicken testing out mm -hmm. vegan chicken nuggets. Obviously that's not health food, but in terms of shifting the culture where, uh, for example, you go into a Burger King now and there's a, a something that says plant-based, 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 which seems to be a lot less threatening to mainstream America than the word vegan. Do you see the culture changing, Michelle? Of course the culture is changing. I mean, for people like you and I, it's changing really slow and we're just behind it, trying to push it, push it, push it. But it definitely is changing. There is a shift happening. More people are becoming aware. So, I mean, right now, People know factory farming is the leading cause in our environment's destruction. They know this, they're hearing this. And the people that didn't know it with all the media attention happening right now with the Amazon, they're paying attention to this. So the people are hearing the facts. 50% of children between the ages of two and 15 have fatty streaks in their arteries. They're literally beginning stages of heart disease in children. 35% of all cancer deaths are caused by diet where 33% are caused by tobacco. One hot dog or two slices of bologna a week are enough to increase colorectal cancer by 30 to 50% in adults. People are hearing these facts and they're starting to listen. You know, it's been slow, but people are starting to pay attention now. So I do see a shift, I see it. And I live in an area that's not really progressive. Okay, so I'm from New York. This area of Florida is not progressive. And where I live, there really hasn't been much here. So the fact that things are starting to happen in my area really tells you what is happening with the shift around the country. And if you see me looking down, it's because I'm sharing this video. I urge all of you to share, 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 because we want parents around the country to have these options. Mm -hmm. Kids are not as healthy as they can be. Definitely and, not. <laughs> yeah, and and so what what we see is that parents, because the information is withheld, because mainstream media is controlled by meat, dairy, and pharmaceutical industries, the three industries that would suffer most if people switched to plant based, mm -hmm. uh, which is one of the reasons why the meat and dairy industry now are making that transition right. because they know that what we're doing is unsustainable. Look at the rainforest. CNN yeah. did a story saying the rainforest is being set on fire because we are eating so much meat. Mm -hmm. And it's true. It yeah. was set intentionally by people clearing the forest for cattle grazing. And so you see the lungs of the earth and people beating their chest about this as they should be but where is the connection to why is the fire being set? Why are these fires being set? Mm -hmm. You see that being downplayed because, oh, 
if we make, if we connect those three dots and say, whereas the lungs of the earth, the Amazon are being set on fire as we speak because they are clearing land for cattle grazing mm -hmm. because I, not me, but I, the person watching, uh, reading the article or watching the news, because I have, uh, I'm a consumer of beef and pork and I want to eat that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Then wherefore you are the one setting the Amazon <laughs> on fire. You are setting the Amazon on fire. So um, it's very difficult for people to connect those dots. Mm -hmm. they, there's tremendous resistance. And what we're saying is we are offering you a gift. Now it's easier than ever. There's no need to say, oh, I don't know what to eat. Do you eat grass? No. When <laughs> Burger King is offering an impossible Whopper, or when Subway well, I mean, we, is offering we've we realize the reason that Subway and Burger King and these places are jumping on this bandwagon right now, because yeah. the percentage of people eating plant-based and eating vegan has risen and they are doing it strictly for money. I mean, that's why they are in this. They're jumping into the impossible burger and the beyond burger and to these meat alternatives because they want, they want to capitalize off of the financial gain. But regardless of what they're in it for, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me yeah. what their purpose is, as long as people are taking meat off the menu and putting plants on the plate. That's my initiative. <laughs> We've got a caller, Lindsay from Woodland Hills. Lindsay, what is your question or thought? Hey, Jane. Hey, Michelle. I hi. wanted to call in today because, hi, because uh, I'm just burning the midnight oil right now, getting ready to teach a college course at um, Rocky Mountain College in Colorado. I'm going to be teaching distance by distance online. And I really uh, want to get this message across to my students because, you know, they are the ones and they talk a lot about climate change. And I think that's the way to approach it with them. So my question to you, first of all, I want to say thank you so much for doing what you're doing. It's amazing. Uh, and how it's so encouraging to hear how young people want to eat salads and so forth. But my question is, do you have any resources you might give me for college students or how to approach them like you've got the experience how would you do this well so i'm going to talk a little bit in a second about what we're doing um with what we call the compassion project at the school this year can i go ahead and lead into yes, that? Okay. this question will take me right there actually yes so Perfect. at school i really decided i wanted to address these issues of compassion okay and I really want to teach peace. It's really what I want the kids to understand. Compassion has many faces and it comes in different shapes and sizes, right? We know that. Humanity cannot survive without love and compassion. And it's not only humanity that can't survive. We need all the species to survive from the big elephants to the little minnows. We know cat compassion is defined as the sensitivity to end another suffering and the will to free the other from that suffering. So this school year, we're having all kinds of talks and examples of compassion to challenge all of our students to think differently about our words and actions, to think how we can be more compassionate people to our friends, our families, all animals, and to our planet. So do remember, we are a K through 12 school. So my message is related to kids. Obviously, to college students, you could you know, raise this, this bar so you could take it a step further. So I personally, I want the students to start thinking about the word compassion. I want them to start thinking about what it really means and where they think compassion starts and ends. That's really a big one for me. Does compassion apply to people who are different, to strangers, to pets? Does it apply to wild animals, to animals labeled as food? I want everyone to think about where their personal current compassion circle limit is because every one of us, including us, we all have one. Where does that limit end? So I personally generally think all people agree that compassion is good, right? We all agree it's good, but that boundary line shifts from person to person. And that's based on their own habits, their own desires and their own experiences. So everybody will say that compassion should automatically be given to children. Yes? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay, kids are innocent. And we all recognize that. And we wanna protect kids from abuse and harm. 
If we saw a child being abused, naturally, we're gonna step in and intervene and help that child because that is compassion. But when it comes to innocent animals, when it comes to the planet, we have a different set of standards. And typically we just wanna ignore the abuse and turn a blind eye. So I wanna protect all innocent living things, whether they walk on two legs or four legs. My compassion limit, my compassion circle doesn't end with two legs. It doesn't end because the skin or fur is different. It doesn't end because they speak a different language. My compassion is extended to all sentient beings that live and breathe. And I wanna raise questions to get students and people thinking, like let's ask ourselves, was that a compassionate choice? Can I extend my compassion limit? Was anyone hurt? You know, if you think about that and answer honestly, you start to see things a little differently. So this year in our compassion project series at the school, we're gonna be talking about compassion and how it applies to everything. So how it applies to people, how it applies to animals and how it applies to the planet. So we have different speakers, guests and videos on the subject. So we have guests who are coming in to talk about compassion to people. So things like the elderly, people with disabilities, people who are different. We'll have different religious leaders coming in to talk about their views of compassion. But compassion cannot end with people. It has to extend beyond people. So our compassion project is gonna naturally extend to animals and to the environment planet. We're gonna have animal sanctuaries like Big Cat Rescue, Ruderville and Kindred Spirits coming in. And some are bringing furry friends for the kids. We have vegan speakers coming in like Veronica Green, AKA Veggie Vero and Vegan Evan. Um, I want our students to be healthy mentally, physically, and spiritually. So we'll have um, doctors and health coaches coming in from the plant-based nutrition movement of Tampa Bay. And they're gonna be speaking to the students about health and self-care and the benefits of a plant-based diet. We also have environmentalists coming in to talk about showing compassion to the planet because we humans are totally messing it up. And these kids are going to be our leaders one day. So in the news right now, just as you mentioned, we're hearing all about of the destruction of the rainforest. This is nothing new. This has been going on a long time, but right now we have the media attention. So we want our students to be aware of the big things happening on the planet, but we also want them to be aware of the little things that they can do at home to protect and benefit our planet. We're gonna be showing documentaries like Love and Bananas and a school edited version of A Prayer for Compassion. There's even a rumor, and I'm hoping it comes true, that James Aspie is gonna be making a visit in person, and we're hoping to get some other well-known vegans coming, and we're hopeful that Jane is gonna be coming too. So you'll be hearing from me about that, Jane. I would love to come. I would be honored. And one of the reasons why we have our mascot, little Rico here, A, of my three dogs, he's the best behaved. And in fact, he often <laughs> sleeps the show. No commentary on the uh, content. It's fabulous. But um, it's because so many people love their dogs. Just yesterday, somebody was telling me how much he loved his dog and talking and sharing so many anecdotes with such love and then went and ate three pieces of bacon. I know. And it's it's really imperative that we show people if you love your dog then there's no reason not to love a pig and if you love a pig then there's no reason to uh, subject that animal to horrific suffering and industrialized torture called factory farming mm -hmm. and then slaughter um these are babies they had mothers um we need to have people break open their hearts. That, this is what I was saying about extending their circle of compassion. So we all started with one, right? I mean, we all started somewhere and then we saw something or we heard something and then it extended our circle of compassion. And it's a lot of times because we didn't know, we just weren't aware, you know? I mean, my whole story starts with my health, but the whole thing that started, it was something I saw on Facebook. It was a Facebook post. And when I saw it, I was just shocked. And that changed me forever. So people, you can't blame people for what they don't know. And that's why we have to get out there and tell people. And, so, and I wanna say, we're gonna take a, a short break here on Voice America Radio. We're gonna stay live on facebook.com slash Jane Velez Mitchell. We're going to take a short break. We're going to be back with your personal story, Michelle, which is so absolutely compelling. 
And I want to hear it from your mouth. So stay right there. We're going to take a brief break. Don't go anywhere. We are talking green culture. Oh, we're talking green culture right now? Is that what we're doing? No, we're just talking about the green culture in general. <laughs> go ahead, let's go to break and then we're gonna stay on Facebook. Okay. Yeah, guys, for all of you watching on Facebook, just to explain, um, this is Jane Unchained Live Talk. We are on Voice America Radio, which puts us on iTunes and Spotify and all of these other um, platforms for people to hear this information. So you can just Google if you're driving, for example, uh, well, pull over first, but uh, <laughs> Voice America Radio and all of our interviews will co come up, all of our podcasts. But we also simulcast on Facebook to spread the message to those who are looking at their news feed and maybe it's Monday morning, <coughs> they wake up and um, they feel like today is a good moment to start their life anew. Life is happening now. Uh, we can be in this drift where we go on and on day after day, week after week, month after month, looking for something to give our lives more meaning. And then all of a sudden our lives are at the end and we go, oh, wow, maybe there was something I missed. Well. Watch this, watch this broadcast because contained herein, I kid you not, is the real secret and the answer to living a happy, joyous and free life. Free from killing and free with the despondency, the depression, the guilt, the shame that comes with it. Our subconscious is so much more intelligent than our conscious mind. Now, when I covered crime for many years. I gave it up because I, back. I'm working on transitioning to a culture of nonviolence and I want to participate. But just to wrap up the thought, when people kill someone, they unless they're sociopaths, they experience guilt, shame. Sometimes they revisit the scene of their crime. It's no different with animals. It's just that society says it's legal. We're coming mm -hmm. back to the show right now. Okay. You are listening to Jane Unchained. To reach the show today, call in to 1-866-472-5795. That's 1-866-472-5795. You may also send an email in to News at gmail.com. Now back to the show. Hello, we are back with our incredible guest, Michelle Fasnacht, and our amazing little Rico here, our mascot. He's a rescue from Puerto Rico. And uh, so we, we always have him with us because everybody loves their dogs and their cats. And our message is if you love this little guy or your little guy or gal at home, then how could you not love the cows and the pigs and the chickens and the turkeys and the goats and the lambs who are just like him? They, they have moms, they have feelings, they feel, we all know our dogs dream. Animals dream. That says something right there. So what can we do to extend our circle of compassion? Now there's a school in Florida that is offering plant-based meals because really the decision, somebody came up to me yesterday and said, I want to help Jane Unchained. I like what you're doing. Veganism, eh, that's down the road, but I really would like to pitch in. I said, there's only one way to pitch in. That's to not eat animals and, and to, you could call it vegan, you could call it plant-based, you could call it whatever you want. But the, the baseline, the only thing that's required for membership is uh, to not participate in the killing of animals unnecessarily with uh, your plate, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And our society is shifting so everybody, we don't want an exclusive club. We want everybody to be in this wonderful lifestyle that's going to save the planet. Michelle Fasnacht, you run a school in Florida that's going to be entirely plant-based and focused on compassion, educating the kids. We're going to talk about the new restaurant you and your husband just opened in Trinity, Florida. But tell us your personal story of, of your health issues and how you overcame them. Okay. So my health story is pretty, pretty crazy. So first of all, I started as a kid who really didn't like to eat meat, but I did because it's what my parents gave me to eat, but I really wasn't into it. Um, when I was a teenager, 
a young teenager. I remember my dad gave me a burger one day and I took a bite of it and he said, oh, how's that burger? And I just said, oh, you know, it's fine. And he just started laughing. He said, oh, that's a deer burger. And at that moment, like I like threw myself on the ground, started crying and <laughs> like I connected a deer burger with Bambi. And so I was all done. OK, so I became vegetarian at that moment. Um, but that this is part of my health story, which is why I'm telling it now. So I did continue to eat cheese, dairy and occasional seafood. Um, then when I had my first pregnancy, a myriad of health problems started. In 1990, I was diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome, which was the tagline for the doctors didn't know what you had back in the 90s. Um, I had developed numbness and tinglingness in my extremities that I was told was because of bulging discs and that I needed surgery. As the years went on, I had more health issues develop, all with different specialty doctors, and every different specialty doctor gave me a different diagnosis and a different prescription. In 2000, things were getting worse and worse. I had terrible brain fog, pain, serious bathroom issues, hypothyroidism, numerous vitamin deficiencies. I had so many things. It was just a laundry list of things. I felt bad all the time. I was on so many different medications. I had serious nerve pain in both hands. I was told I had carpal and cubital tunnel and I needed surgery. I had the surgery, but the pain continued. In 2009, I was diagnosed positive for lupus. In 2009, I was diagnosed legally blind because of my field of vision. In 2009, I had an MRI showing hundreds of active brain lesions and I was diagnosed with progressive MS. So 2009 was a really, really bad year for me, but things had been leading up to that my whole life from when I was a teenager on at that point. At the time I was diagnosed with MS and lupus, I had lost my vision and ability to walk. So my life was a real mess. Um, I was shortly after that put on a monthly infusion for MS called Tasabri to slow down the immune system. And hopefully you don't have big, in, big flares after that. The Tasabri did seem to help with new flares occurring, but it did absolutely zero nothing for pain, pseudo exasperations, which are basically returning symptoms or the horrible daily symptoms I was having. I had the same miserable MS issues every day. More medications were added. And now that I had diagnoses, they were adding all kinds of other medications. And I was taking so many pills a day, I lost count. Every day, I lived with brain fog, pain, bowel and intestinal issues, numbness, tingling, memory loss, confusion. I dealt with regular chronic and acute bronchitis, regular pneumonia. I had difficulty walking. I was using a cane. Sometimes I couldn't walk and I was bed bound. I had foot drop. I had sluggish bowels and couldn't use the bathroom on my own, which is a story I'll skip because of those horrific details. I dealt with electric shocks in my body. Um, I had something called MS hug. I had severe nerve pain. At one point I lost the ability to swallow. However, thankfully that was short term. That was horrible. I had years that were absolutely fallacious and my quality of life was terrible. My doctors told me to prepare to lose my eyesight totally and to prepare to be immobile. I was as depressed as a person could be. In 2014 or 15, um, I saw something on Facebook about seafood and I stopped eating seafood because remember all this time I'm vegetarian but I'm eating a little bit of cheese, or actually I ate a lot of cheese, to be honest with you. And but that's not really vegetarian, just to clarify. Yeah, yeah, that's pescatarian. pescatarian. Yes, I know. Yeah. I, I ate seafood. Okay, but continue on, continue okay. on. Okay, so all this time, you know, I'm eating my daily cheese, I'm eating occasional seafood. And then in 2014, 15, I saw something on Facebook that just made me stop eating seafood. It was just something I saw and I just stopped, okay? That was it. But then in 2015, I saw a video on Facebook that literally changed my life. So I saw a video about a dairy cow. And I honestly, I, I'm so, I just feel embarrassed to admit this, but I honestly thought happy cows provided milk. <laughs> I really did. I did not know the abuse that went on 
to get cow's milk. I thought by do being a vegetarian, I was not harming or killing animals. And when I saw this video, I was mortified because I had no idea by using dairy and eating cheese, I was participating in all these deaths of cows. I just didn't know. So I stopped. So Facebook video made me stop. Um, 24 hours later, after giving up cheese, my health completely changed. I immediately was feeling better. And for the first time in eight years, was able to go to the bathroom without pain. I know that may not sound like a big deal for anyone, but let me tell you, it is the biggest deal in the world. You cannot even understand what I was living with. And that is not something that I, you know, I'm going to publicly share, but I can tell you it was miserable. And 24 hours after giving up dairy, it was gone. So I immediately knew that was why nothing else had changed in my life. And this is something I dealt with every single day. So I immediately started researching and reading how food affects health. And I found a link between dairy and MS, which no one had ever mentioned to me in my whole life. And so I became obsessed with learning and enrolled in PhD classes for nutrition, as well as taking all sorts of other classes about health. I began using myself as an experiment to see what worked and didn't work on me for my health issues. I was in all sorts of shock about what I was learning because no doctor had ever told me this. And I'm telling you, I spent decades going to different doctors and different specialists and not one ever, ever talked to me about health and nutrition. Never, 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 never. They gave me prescriptions. That's all they ever did was give me prescriptions. So I did this self-made intense routine. I was doing juicing and blending and raw plant foods combined with several lifestyle factors. And within a month of time, all of my health issues went away, all gone for me. That's what happened to me. That was my experience. I lost weight. I had energy. I was sleeping good. I literally woke up one morning and I remember this clear as day, everything was gone. And I looked over to my husband and I was like, I don't have any brain fog right now. I hadn't had no brain fog in decades. Like if you've ever had brain fog before, which most people haven't, it's a terrible feeling and you can't think and you're confused and you can't see things straight. And it was gone. The brain fog was just hundred percent gone. I didn't have any more numbness or tingling in my fingers and my feet, which I had for decades. I had since I was 18 years old. It was amazing. I was literally amazing. <laughs> okay. But at this point, I was scared it was gonna come back. I wasn't sure, was this permanent or was this temporary or what was it? So I kept doing the things that I was doing because I wanted to keep my health stable. And so time went on and my health stayed stable and I stayed a healthy weight. <laughs> my tons of deficiencies, which hadn't been normal in decades became normal. I stopped taking all those pills. I became a certified health coach and started a health coaching practice. So I could work with people who were like me People sick, desperate, fed up of all the millions of diagnoses and pills that weren't doing anything. And then here, here's what you need to hear because forward to now. So no new flares, no returning symptoms, stable and healthy with lots of energy. So originally in 2009, I was diagnosed with progressive MS with hundreds of active lesions on my brain. My last MRI in 2018 there were no changes, no additions of anything, but here was the interesting part. I love this. Um, the second part, so the first part says no changes. And the second part, the radiologist says the foci, which is the white matter seen in the previous reports had disappeared. And there must've been an error in the previous reports. Now, I thought that was hysterical because the previous reports, I had had an MRI every year for 10 years. So it wasn't like one report, I had had 10 reports, read by 10 different radiologists at like four or so different, you know, MRI x-ray labs. So I thought that was really hysterical. So um, it was not a bad report. It was that I had lesions disappear. My eyesight, which in 2009, 2010, um, in my right eye, I had 2040 vision. In my left eye, I had 2050 vision. And I was diagnosed legally blind to my field impediment. In 2018, my most recent eye exam, I had 2040 in the right eye, so that was the same. 2040 in the left eye, which was improvement from the 2050 I originally had, so that vision improved, but I had normal visual fields, 100% normal, okay? Not blind, very big deal. 
Then in for those who are joining us, all of this improvement in your health after years of literally being completely incapacitated and losing your eyesight, all of your health improvements back to the vibrant, healthy person you are now occurred mm-hmm. when you gave up dairy products and went 100% yes. face, 100%. 100%, yep. yep. And then, so then 2009, I was also diagnosed with lupus, positive result for lupus in 2019, negative result for lupus. That's gone. My health just completely improved. Okay. And my journey to me is really cool because it shows a few things. So one, it shows the power of Facebook because Facebook is what caused me to go from vegetarian or pescatarian to vegan. Okay. It wouldn't have happened without it. So that is so important. What we're doing today is so important because this is such a great way to get the message out to just the everyday person who's not hearing it at the doctor's office. Two, it proves illnesses and diseases, which are thought to be hopeless can be changed with a plant-based diet. It was for me, I mean, you have to try it, but let me tell you something. I deal with people who have these experiences and stories every single day. So whether you wanna call it reversed or remission, whatever, it doesn't matter. I'll take the word remission any day of the week. I didn't have one day of remission for decades. So whatever you wanna call it, you know, reverse remission cured, I don't care. Just if you're healthy and you have good quality of life, that's what matters. And then number three for me is, if people were really meant to eat animal meat, okay, in the way that we're doing it in this society, I personally don't believe it would be causing all the health and environmental issues it does. If, think about it, and Jane, I'm sure you talk about this all the time, but when you're eating animals, you're ingesting fear, suffering, misery. I think those things have consequences. I don't know. I like want my body to be a garden and not a graveyard. So I like having a diet that aligns to my morals. And for me, taking animals off the menu and putting plants on the plate literally saved my life. What an extraordinary story. Wow. Wow. That is just uh, a mind blower. Uh, It it is. And you know what, Jane, what's really funny is I was interviewed the other day um, by a newspaper and they called me the next day and they said, you know, can you give us proof of these health claims you're making? Because they're very extraordinary. And I said, absolutely. So I went home and I grabbed everything and I faxed it all over and I was so happy. I'm like, here's my before, here's my after, you know, because if people don't believe it, people can't understand if you can really make changes in health by changing your diet, why aren't your doctors telling you? You know, and we say this all the time, sometimes they don't know, You know, I mean, sometimes that's literally just what the case is. They don't know. But I mean, we need to get the word out because people don't all have to live sick and unhealthy and have a terrible quality of life. Be willing to try things other than just pills. Well, one of the reasons is that doctors get precious little training in nutrition. Mm -hmm. The entire system is not set up to prevent illness. Mm -hmm. It's set up to let illness occur and then manage it, which is a profit center. Right, manage it with prescription. (laughs) If you don't get sick, how are they gonna sell you pills? And to use a dramatic example, uh, for example, there are pills about cholesterol uh, that affect all parts of the body. Mm -hmm. And if people don't get those symptoms, they can't be sold the pills. Right. You think of a million examples that I'm talking about. You turn on the TV. I turn on the TV on cable news to watch the latest news. And it's fast food, pharmaceutical, fast food, pharmaceutical, fast food, pharmaceutical. So answer your own question. Of course, they're not going to tell you this information. Mm -hmm. That's why even though people criticize Facebook, I say, thank God for Facebook. Thank God for Instagram. Thank God for uh, LinkedIn. I shared this to LinkedIn when I was hitting share. I shared it to Twitter. This is the way to get the information out because you cannot charge for a disease that never happened. <laughs> Very true. Yeah. That's the bottom line. You know, you can't have a fundraiser and, and have a board of directors of a nonprofit that's, that are walking home with huge paychecks 
saying they're going to find a cure if you never had the disease in the first place. Mm -hmm. And how many times have you marched for cures and decade after decade, oh my, that cure never quite comes along, does it? And you're still marching and giving your hard earned dollars, okay? Uh, even though most Americans do not have $400 for an emergency, they are convinced every time they go to a store, here, give money for this cure and for that cure and for that cure, the cure that never comes. When the real answer is to prevent the illness in the first place. Right, that's so right. Doctors are absolutely part of the system and they are indoctrinated just like people are indoctrinated. And mm -hmm. you know, the one of the key hallmarks of brainwashing is you don't know you're brainwashed. The second you start saying, maybe I'm being conditioned to think this way is the second you're starting to think for yourself as an individual, not as a mm -hmm. programmed consumer mm -hmm. who is treated just as much as a piece of machinery as the farm animals. One of the big breakthroughs I had was when Dr. Celeste Rao, the genius who we profile in our new Jane Unchained uh, film, Countdown to Year Zero. And he said, Jane, they're factory farming people too. And when he said that, it was like, oh, wow, you're right. It's not just the animals. Everybody's being factory farmed. Mm -hmm. The farmers, they're not really farmers anymore. They run concentrated animal feeding operations, warehouses, where these animals are kept in windowless factories and left to drown when there's a hurricane so nobody mm -hmm. can see the bodies floating in the water. Those poor workers who are only farmers in name only are getting sick and they are making very little money and they are trapped and they are seeking a way out. And the sick consumers who are not feeling the energy and the vibrancy and the love for life that they could feel because they're medicated and they've got all these pills, they've got to take pills with side effects. Mm -hmm. They are being factory farmed. Even the doctors are being factory farmed. You go to a hospital, you see these people walking with these little carry-on bags around. Those are all filled with pills. And there are many incentives that they give to the doctors to have them dispense the pills. So we are all part of a sick system. And at the very heart of that sick system is killing 70 billion animals a year unnecessarily. And if we could just make that one switch, and now with all the alternatives, there's no need to say, do I have to eat grass or, or any of that silliness? We can make the switch. You don't want to eat a fast food vegan burger every day, but it's a treat you can have. And guess what? There's sure. something called vegetables and fruits and nuts. And <laughs> I said, well, there's only about 15,000 vegetables, hundreds of grains, thousands of fruits, many different nuts. You know, you're a smart person, figure it out. You know, mm -hmm. um, we've also been conditioned to think that there are only four vegetables, uh, potatoes, broccoli, carrots, and corn. <laughs> mm -hmm. Eggplant, <laughs> artichokes, portobello mushrooms. I mean, the list is endless. Mm -hmm. So... Um, we're, we're really just showing people that there's a whole world out there of fabulous food, no excuses, and join us because we're a happy bunch too. Even when we're not crying over, over the tragedy of the, of the Amazon and what happens to animals, we are happy. There's an internal happiness that occurs when you are, you're living your life in alignment with your values. Absolutely. Your mind knows. Yeah. Uh, and maybe, maybe you could address that, you know vis-a-vis -vis what you see around you when people make the shift because you have such a compelling story. So when they make the shift over to eating plant-based yeah. and vegan, well, I mean, so that's why we started our restaurant, Green Culture, okay? We needed to see the shift. We're educators, we care about our community and our community is behind the times. So when we started talking about starting this restaurant, it was really a joke, honestly. And it was a joke because I was hungry all the time and tired of driving to St. Pete, which is like an hour away from where I live. And it was literally just a joke, but I kept saying it because I am not someone who wants to cook every day and I was getting tired of the drive. And my husband was kind of like pushed me in the direction of doing that. Um, but what led us really to finally take the plunge in doing the restaurant 
is because we truly wanted to bring change to our community. It's 2019 and this area of Florida is behind the times as I'm sure there's many other places too, okay? People need to be aware of what's happening to our animals, to what's happening to our planet and what's happening to themselves. It's right now, it is time to stop subsidizing industries that cause pain and suffering for sentient animals and illness and diseases for humans. It's time to get animals off the menu and put plants on the plate. And we decided if we wanted it to happen, we would have to take the risk and be part of the change. You know, if you want to see the change, you need to be the change. Well, how is your restaurant doing? Where is it? Where is Trinity, Florida? I mean, I my first job when I got out of college was in Fort Myers, Florida, and I love Florida. I've always, my, my heart is in Florida. Uh, you know, I, I, I absolutely adore it, but where are you? So we're like in the outskirts of the Tampa Bay area. Trinity didn't even exist 20 years ago. The, the air, it literally didn't. Trinity did not exist. There was Newport Ritchie. And then all of a sudden, all this field area, acres and acres and acres of fields, all of a sudden it became a new town and it was named Trinity. So it has the same zip code as Newport Ritchie, but it now has a new name. So it just kind of popped up out of nowhere. How is your restaurant doing? Um, so here we're in a place that is, you know, not a lot of plant-based people and not a lot of vegans, but here's what's really cool about it. So when we opened, I, first of all, my husband chose the location, so I give him credit for all of the, for all of that. Honestly, I wanted to go to St. Peter, Tampa, because I felt that that would be the best location with the most amount of business and people. Um, but he really wanted to open our first location here. It was really close to where we live. It was close to the school, and it was close. It, it's in an underserved area. I was just afraid, are people going to come? So what's been really interesting is people are coming. So we have people that, um, we have shockingly vegans who are coming here because I didn't know there were any other vegans in this area other than us. I literally didn't. I've known like four of them. I've lived here 20 years and all of a sudden they're coming to the restaurant. And I say to them, when I say, well, where do you live? And if they tell me like right around the corner, I'm like, where have you been? And they say, I've been cooking at home or I've been driving to St. Pete. <laughs> There is more people like me. It's amazing. But actually, a few of them, I honestly, this is what they said. I thought it was so funny. They said they were in the closet because it's yeah. so, like, different here. This is not like New York City or like California where it's there's so many vegans and plant-based people. It's really not. So a lot of these people really are in the closet. They really don't share how they eat with others. So when they told me that, I, like, hugged them, and I was like, oh, now you have a place to come where you can feel, like, loved and respected. It's so awesome. Um, then we've been having a bunch of, like, whole food plant-based people who come to the restaurant, and they just want a healthy spot to eat with oil-free options, and seeing that there's people like that in the area has been really cool. But then we're getting, like, a mix of people who just want to add healthy food to their diet. So they're the people who are doing the keto or whatever they're doing, but they want to have, like, a healthy food meal but when they get in our restaurant is very educational we are very different than a typical restaurant so when you walk in i like to call us an edu dash restaurant edu restaurant okay. because when you walk into our restaurant first of all you see two huge tv screens that are playing 24 7 looping videos that are all about health animals and agriculture and our planet they're amazing and so they're very educational. That way, pe when people are sitting there eating or wasting time or hanging out, they can watch the video and they can ask us questions. And people absolutely do that. And then we have um, the wallpaper that you see behind me. That's in the restaurant. And that's like the plant of seed. Um, okay, guess what? I have to interrupt you. We're getting okay. a lot of comments on Facebook. People okay. want to buy the wallpaper. <laughs> and I want to buy the wallpaper. I, I love this wallpaper so much. I've been looking at it the whole time going, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> wait, wait, here's what's really funny about this wallpaper. It was originally a bag. I don't know if you, you can't even see it. You can't even see I'm holding it because it's the same as a background. I, was originally, into a, uh, I would stay still because this technology is not super. Okay. You know, so it was originally, I had this design made into a takeout bag. And yeah. then when I saw it, I loved it. And I'm like, to my husband, I'm like, Eric, we've got to put this somewhere in the restaurant. It's so cool. 
Well, you and, definitely um, need to start selling it. Okay. Because Anybody who's interested, email me. Just email yeah, me about but, it. Yeah, and put it on Etsy because yeah. it's a great idea. And, you know, I've thought of banners. I like the depth of feel we have here, but I've thought of banners, which I do have when I go to conferences, a Jane Unchained banner. Mm -hmm. But that is really cool. And that's great wallpaper that people can put up. Uh, they can put it in their home. They can put it in their kitchen. They could do it as a backsplash. Mm -hmm. So please promise me you're just going to start selling that because I'll be buying it. Cool, cool. And then if you see my t-shirt, I don't know, can you see it? Pigs are just pig dogs. I love yes. it. So we have like all these t-shirts that we have. So let's see if you can see any. Um, I don't know if you can you see the t-shirt. You know, pigs are just pig dogs. Yeah, we have all kinds of cute t-shirts and they match our wallpaper and all of the people that work there wear different t-shirts. And the t-shirts are to get people thinking and to make that connection. Remember, we at the restaurant, we want to extend that circle of compassion also. So we've got the videos playing. We've got the wallpaper. We've got the t-shirt. Have you enrolled people in this lifestyle as a result of the restaurant? Are you seeing people go? Now, one thing I want to say, one trend I'm noticing is I'm trying not to be too attached to, to okay, you've got to be, boom. I, people getting on the journey, reducing their consumption of animal products. We need to applaud that as well. It's a process, not an event for me. Absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. so go ahead. Absolutely. So we've only been open for five weeks now. And I will tell you, every day we have people coming in and telling us how much they're learning from our restaurant because they come in and they ask questions and they sit and they talk and they watch the videos and our tray liners have all kinds of facts on them. So people really feel comfortable to ask questions and to learn. And they're seeing changes. I have um, one girl who works in the plaza where we are. I was just with her this morning, actually. And she was telling me how she's got to run to the restaurant and get her juice because she has to have her juice every single day. If she doesn't have it, she notices a difference. Yesterday, I was speaking to a yoga coach there who is a meat eater, but she was telling me now she comes to our restaurant every Sunday to eat a plant-based meal and it's really feeling good. And now she's going to start having more plant-based meals throughout the week. And we have meat eaters. This is funny. So we get these these guys that occasionally roll in and they look at the menu and they, they don't know where they are, right? They're just like, what's happening here? And so then we explain to them, we're a plant-based restaurant. And they're like, oh, well, we came in to get a burger. And we're like, look, try the Beyond Burger, try the Impossible Burger, have a cholesterol-free meal today. You will survive it, you will like it, and it's cholesterol-free. And they eat it and they love it. And you know what they always say? I'll come back again, I'll oh, do this again. And that's what it's about. So we're serving the vegans, we're serving the plant-based people, but we're also getting the meat eaters to come in and to try something maybe they've never had it before. And they're learning something new. And they're seeing that they will survive if they have a plant-based meal. It doesn't taste bad, it tastes awesome. And this is good yeah. stuff. You're waking so people up. You are uh, doing so much incredible work. You are such an inspiration. So many of the comments on Facebook are just like, how inspiring your story, your energy, your multitasking, running a school that serves plant-based meals yeah. and a restaurant at the same time. OMG. <laughs> uh, and I'm sure a TV uh, show is not far behind because your backdrop looks uh, very professional. <laughs> you could start doing live videos right there every day, updating people on what you're doing and the curriculum and everything mm -hmm. else. You know, one of the things that we do here on Jane Unchained is we want to encourage other people to use social media. We mm -hmm. don't want the exclusive. We don't want the exclusive at all. This is to inspire people. Right. Every single person who uses the technology to do a Zoom Facebook Live with us or a BeLive.TV, mm -hmm. I tell them, hey, you know, you can do this too, or just get your phone and get a little stand so that you can have it on selfie and do show a meal because this is how we're going to normalize nonviolence. This is how we're going to normalize a plant-based diet. You just heard from Michelle. It was a Facebook video that woke <laughs> her up and literally saved her life. And she's erased all these symptoms. So we're pretty much out of time. Uh, I do hope last 30 seconds that you take this formula for a school and spread it across the nation and the world. 
Uh, any plans to do that quickly? So I've already had several schools contacting me and I'm definitely going to be working with them. Um, right now, like I said, we've just started school. We're in our second week. So we're getting a little more time under our belt. We're working on, um, you know, making sure our menu is perfect and that sort of thing. So there's a lot of elements that go into this and we're doing a food project and a compassion project. We have so much going on at one time, but I really wanna see this spread. I want to see all the schools either going entirely plant-based or at least offering a plant-based option. Like, come yeah. on now, That's at least give the kids an option to eat plants if they wanna eat plants. Exactly. So we try to make that extension. So I'm all for that. So whether they're going to extend it or they're going to go plant-based, I'm, I'm here to help anybody make that transition. Michelle Fastnut, the amazing proprietress with her husband of Green Culture Restaurant in Trinity, Florida, near St. Pete and Tampa, and her amazing school in the same area, changing the world. We love you. Uh, we wish we could just have 4,000 or 4 million of you because you definitely, we would hit the tipping point like that. So thank you for taking the time. I know you're very busy. Uh, we want to stay updated. And I do invite you to do this kind of thing on your own. Um, and uh, because you, you have a dynamic story to tell and you tell it in a very, very dynamic way. Everybody, thank you for watching. Please share the video so that those who might be suffering some of the ailments that she was suffering could see going plant-based, kicking, ditching the dairy, Ditching the meat is the way to go. Ditching the seafood. Um, I, I'm absolutely thrilled that uh, we got a chance to hear your amazing story. We're going to see you next time. And please like facebook.com slash Jane Velez Mitchell. Go to janeunchained.com. Let's change the world, people. Thank you so much. And I'm going to hit end. All clear. Great job. Uh, there we go. Stop live stream. Thank you so much, A-Rod. Have a yep. good week.